Alright, this video is for anybody trying to set up the uh, R1 uh, Zello interface with a radio that has not already been done before. I'm just trying to show you how this thing works. So, here's the R1 little cable coming out da -da -da, into the little breakout board that they give you. Here's all the pins on that breakout board. Speaker, ground, um, PTT, mic squelch minus and then 12 volt plus on here let me show you first how to set it up on the computer so i have zello right now in gateway mode and the way you get it into gateway mode is you come into the config file which is located in the app data folder um it says set gateway mode set that to true and before you put it into gateway mode um create a group in the Zello software and name it Zello Gateway with capital Z, capital G, and a space in the middle. And then add whatever channels you want into that group. I just have one channel in there, um, and it is the Miami Ham digital channel. So with that in mind, the next time you go to options, when it's in gateway mode, um, there will be a radio tab where you can actually use COM ports for push to talk. So this box you always see people with the USB detection port plugged in. The way I do it is I have the USB audio port, but I also have it set for USB serial. Man, this reflection is hard to read. It says USB serial port, and there's a cable coming out of there. So, with that in mind, you come in here, select your COM port. For the TX mode, you set it to RTS and set it to high. For RX, you set it to DSR and set it to high. So there you go. That's the software side of things. Now, the way this box works, whenever a signal comes from Zello and comes out of the interface into your radio or repeater controller or repeater whatever thing, it's going to take the PTT wire and it's going to pull it to ground with about 300 ohms of resistance. So whatever you're using needs to be set up for active low. So your repeater or repeater controller or Motorola radio needs to be set for active low as the trigger mechanism. Now, in order for this box to recognize an input signal from a carrier operated relay, carrier operated switch, um, squelch, whatever the pin is called, cos, core, um, you know, whatever it's called. Usually they're called cos or squelch on most radios. You have to have ground hooked up as you would assume, you actually don't do anything with the squelch minus pin. I have a green wire on squelch minus. You do not use that pin. You actually use the 12 volt pin. So here I have 12 volts, and here I have a little 5 volt source. It says 12 volt. There's no 12 volt coming out of it, so it's safe to hook up. I have an alligator clip which has plus 5 volts on it. This will also work with plus 3 volts or whatever your repeater or radio is putting out for a cost signal. Here's the red light. Uh, well, it's not red. It's going to be red when I hit transmit. So when I transmit on this, the box is going to turn red. And now we're receiving from the talkback, and it's turning red. So there you go. That shows that the link between the Internet and the box is working. Now, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put it on the 12-volt wire, and this is going to turn blue. Oh, wait. Didn't get my finger on it quite right. There we go. And as you can see, the account this is linked to is transmitting. If I let go of this pin, light goes off, that stops transmitting. So, anyway, this video is just to sort of show you that the pin, the 12 volt pin, is what you have to use as your input signal, not the squelch minus. You do not need to hook squelch minus up to ground or anything, just Literally, it's just kind of labeled wrong. So, anyway, make sure you have this in... Oh. KM4 OVZ, what are you up to? Somebody's calling me on the radio. There goes the box. The box is working. Anyway, make sure you have the switch in the YKI position and ASL off. Hopefully that helps anybody with has who has some confusion. Thanks. Bye.